Launching it deep downfield. And it's taken away. One final play that could have changed the entire game. And unlike weeks prior, it was the Dallas defense that steps up to the challenge and seals the win for the Dallas Cowboys in week four, 20 to 15, the final in MetLife Stadium. And now your Cowboys are two and two in the season heading into week five. There were doubts about this defense going into week four, but they had answers. They held the Giants to field goals all day. And how about the run defense allowing a season low 1.1 yards per carry? And this offense finally found some rhythm as well against the Giants with Mike McCarthy getting the running backs involved in the screen game. Pass catchers getting open for Dak Prescott and allowing him to cook. Dak threw for 221 yards and two touchdowns and the Cowboys get the win. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't perfect, but a step in the right direction is all they can ask for. Um, as you said, getting CD going, big time playmaker, um, get him some catches. What in the second drive there led to a touchdown, uh, able to overcome some penalties even on that drive. Uh, get there in the third drive, uh, they leave him one on one, able to attack that. Um, after what, Luke on a big fourth down conversion. Uh, it was huge, but but we've got to build off of those drives and continue to go. Um, didn't finish the way that we wanted to, not to our standard. Um, left it in the hands of the defense, which is um, credit to those guys for finishing, getting it done, um, not allowing any touchdowns. But uh, we're, we're, a, we're a, an offense that can finish better and score more touchdowns than we did tonight. So um, we've got to look at ourselves in the mirror and, and go get that done. Yeah, Todd Archer with ESPN. How vital was getting a win tonight? After it was huge. It was huge. Yeah, after obviously losing two, especially at home. Uh, coming on the road, first division game. Um, division wins are always tough. Uh, as I said, then you add on the road uh, before a long weekend. Um, puts a better taste, taste in our mouth. But at the end of the day, as I've, as I've said, even after those two losses, uh, a couple weeks or you know the past two weeks, is it's a process. So we're not going to get complacent. We're not going to get overexcited about what we've done tonight. Um, it's about building, and it's about figuring out uh, what we can do better in all phases. Um, but it's a lot easier to do that with the win. We need more of a separation. We, we let them drive a little bit, a couple momentum things, get, you know, big plays that they were getting. Um, when you do that, we need to rush better. We got to do a lot of things, but um, it was a good start. We're just we're just not satisfied. Yeah, you know, I told you, uh, winning is important. It's hard to do in this league. So, you know, edge it out a 2015 win. But it wasn't perfect, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm done scraping by. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to scrape by no more. I want legit wins. I want to win consistently. And uh, we got a tough matchup next week. Yeah, I'm going to try to get back for it. They only had one yard to carry. Just what was different about the run defense? Man and mentality, right? Like I said, there's nothing, you know, thing about football, yeah, they say it's X and O, but it's, everything's about mentality. Set, reset the line of scrimmage, toughness, dominating the man in front of you. You know, that's all football's about, and um, everyone locked in on that. You know what I'm saying? I told you we came in Sunday, but I told you, flashing is good. Let's do it consistently. You know, I mean, a team like that where there's a lot of chips, a lot of slides, a lot of running back help. You know, the running backs, I don't even think he released for a route unless it was a screen. I mean, you know, what I realize in this league, even the best get help. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, we, we'll create a better plan for idea that, of, you know, idea that I don't think we've seen a consistent running back, you know, tight end help that much. Uh, maybe chips on the outside, but I mean, I'm telling you, he was stepping up into B gaps, sliding our way. Uh, you know, it was a good plan, but we got to create a better plan for it. There was so much frustration here at the star following the loss in week three to the Baltimore Ravens, but this win was a good bounce back win, right? Just to get this team's confidence back and this mind of his team back right. But how about C.D. Lamb? We got his confidence back, his mind's back right. The production certainly was back right. Is 88 back? I don't know. That's what the streets are saying. We'll find out right here coming up on Cowboys Rewind. Cowboys Rewind is brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, and by SWBC Mortgage, customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com.
This segment is brought to you by Ashley, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. CeeDee Lamb visibly showing some frustration on the sideline in week three with just his four catch performance on seven targets, but he bounced back in a big way in week four against the New York Giants. Seven catches on eight targets and a 55 yard touchdown. Here's what he had to say post game. It's obviously getting started early is very important. Um, getting a feel for the game, seeing how they're covering me and then kind of exposing their hand early. So felt good. Appreciate it. Finally got one-on-one. -on -one. I think I was the only one-on-one -on -one I got all game, and we exploited it. Uh, shout out Dak for the ball. Shout out OC for the play call. So. What's your mindset? You know you're not going to get a lot of one-on-ones. So you do. Let's go score. That's my mindset. Whenever I get one-on-one, -on -one, let's go score. Nah, nah, nah. Everything was just kind of going by fast in that situation. And, um, yeah, all the passion and everything kind of came out of me. Uh, granted, I scored first, so that was a plus. But, yeah, uh, I told my coach that won't happen again. I just get one a year, and that was my one. <laughs> that stuff built up from last week? It was, of... Yeah, it was built up from a long time ago. It, uh, you know when you have Arbor on your side to make a play? You know, yeah. Yeah, I told him. I said, "Bro, I appreciate you, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't. I didn't blink a bit once the uh, like the flag came out or whatever. But then I definitely went over there and told him that I appreciate him for the consistency and everything that he brings to the table. So, short week, guys. A lot of guys got banged up tonight. What does it say about the team to be able to Sunday to Thursdays are not an NFL player's favorite or ideal, but um, obviously for everyone to, you know." push through and then knowing in the back end we get more time to rest, uh, get to watch the games as if we are a fan. So uh, happy about that. Get more again, more time to rest, but then getting it out early is probably the best thing about it. Um, obviously, it's, it's more joy in here. Um, I mean, you lose two in a row, you kind of start going through a phase where everybody is, is kind of uptight. Obviously, you're ready to play again and kind of get it over with, but Good for us to uh, come out one and this week, and it was very, it's the one we needed. You know, it was a division game, put us in the right place. C.D. Lamb and this offense doing just enough to get the win on Thursday, hopefully making some strides heading into week five. But this offensive line still struggling heading into week five. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly from week four against the New York Giants up next. We've got Kyle Yeomans to help me break it all down. This segment was brought to you by Ashley, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys rocking the Arctic white in week four and we're wearing it very well. <laughs> Uh, they lived up to the expectations and did not leave cold this time. Winning in MetLife Stadium against the New York Giants 20 to 15. The final in a week four now two and two in the season. Nicole Hutchinson, we got Kyle Yeomans with me on the next couple of segments to talk about this matchup. And when you talk about this offense specifically, usually when they get punched in the mouth, they have a hard time of responding. Yeah. And Thursday night they got punched in the mouth, a three and out. And then they come back on the second drive and respond. What did you like about this offense Thursday night? Well, I like the response just because it wasn't pretty. It was a little bit gritty. It was a, a, a drive See where they – Not really. <laughs> they, whenever the, the drive started, they were moving in the right direction, found Brandon Cooks early, got the ball to Rico Dowdle a couple different times. But it, overall, I mean, it was still a drive that was negated by penalties. They had a couple holding calls early. They had the holding call on Tyler Guyton that moved them back just two plays before they found Rico Dowdle on the screen play that ultimately went for the score. So I like the way they responded to an up and down drive. This is not a uh, finished product on the offensive side of the football. I don't think anybody's going to expect them to be <laughs> a finished product in the middle of September. Coming off of a short week, they needed a drive like that to show that, hey, even when things don't go our way, even when there are a couple of mistakes that can hinder a drive, we have the firepower, we have the offense that can push through that and score. I thought it went a long way in terms of determining their confidence level for the rest of that matchup. We're going to get to those penalties in just a few seconds because we can't let that slide yeah. at all. But when you talk about Dak Prescott, though, specifically finishing with his first time this season with
with a 100 passer rating. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first drive specifically, he got six different guys involved and completed all nine of his passes to Lamb, Tolbert, Ferguson, Cooks, and also Rico Dottle capping off that drive with a touchdown. What's your thoughts on just how Dak was able to get so many guys involved? Well, that's the key to this offense starting to go in the right direction because initially it's CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Cooks. You didn't have Jake Ferguson in week yeah. two because of the knee injury. Once he was back in the fold, it was really just CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson. You took Cooks out of that equation until the fourth quarter in that week three loss to Baltimore. Then he finally started sharing the rock throwing it to Tolbert, throwing it to Turpin, getting Rico Dowdle involved in the screen game. They finally did do that again and kept it consistent. They had some early completions to CeeDee Lamb, which helps build his confidence, puts him in the right mindset early on, and keeps the defense on their toes when it comes to covering anybody else on the offensive side of the line. So I, I really did like the, the game plan from Mike McCarthy. His play calling was better in the first quarter, and I thought it set them up for success the rest of the game. And Hunter Lipke, I mean, can we also, I mean, come like, on. Just, like highlight the fact that he's now another trusted weapon for Dak Prescott. Yeah. Uh, you saw him be very trusted, like I mentioned, um, as far as this offense. But when you talk about the run game, only 80 yards rushing. Rico Dottle, though, leading the way yeah. with his first uh, touchdown of the season. And what did you like from Rico Dottle? It was the first time that I think the Cowboys made an emphasis or, or put an emphasis on getting one guy an opportunity to have some success. They've been going back and forth in the sometimes in the same drive of mixing and matching Rico Dowdle, Ezekiel Elliott. And then you have, of course, Deuce Vaughn that comes in as kind of your change of pace guy. Well, they gave the rock to Rico Dowdle and they said, here, Get after it. You're our number one guy today. Whether that's going to be the same uh, mindset, same game plan moving forward, we'll have to see. But I thought it allowed for him to get his feet underneath him. He had the touchdown, his first touchdown since week 14 against Philadelphia last year. It's something that I think built the confidence. I keep saying that, building confidence, because that's what it's about at this point in the season. You have to find some rhythm, find your identity on offense. Even if you're not going to run the ball effectively, at least give somebody the opportunity to do so. And I thought they did with Rico Dowdle. Something that Mike McCarthy has been talking about for the last couple of weeks is they hadn't gotten that many attempts. Well, yeah. uh, Rico Dowdle with 11 carries on 46 yards. Do you think that he is the guy moving forward? And in, in my eyes, it is because then it comes down to the eye test. Yes, the production still not where it needs to be. But like I said, this is not a finished product. The eye test shows me that Rico Dattle has more size, juice, pass protection and receiving ability than maybe the other two guys have in, in the in the backfield, maybe except for Zeke in pass protection. But in terms of the all around complete back, Rico Dattle's closer to that than anybody else in that running back room. So I think moving forward, he should be the one to get the majority of the carries. I like where you're going with that. This running back room, though, doing what they needed to do without, honestly, the help of this offensive line. They really struggle with a big chunk of those 11 penalties, yeah. specifically Tyler Guyton with a couple of holding penalties as well. Are you concerned at all about this offensive line moving forward? I am because they're going up against teams in the next three games with T.J. Watt for the Steelers, Ada Hutchinson for the Detroit Lions, and then, of course, Nick Bosa for the San Francisco 49ers. Kayvon Thibodeau had his way with Tyler Guyton, and it resulted in sacks and penalties. You can't have that happening moving forward. Luckily, they have a little extra practice time to get ready for Pittsburgh and try and negate some of those things moving forward. Well, it was a game where the Cowboys needed to dominate in the trenches on both sides of the ball. They struggled on the offensive side, but on the defensive side, they completely dominated. We've got Kyle Yeomans to talk about that up next. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. And to watch more Dallas Cowboys content on your connected TV, download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. The Dallas Cowboys run defense was exposed in weeks two and week three, allowing 464 rushing yards. But my goodness, did they turn things around <laughs> in just a short amount of time, three days, and they held the New York Giants to 26 rushing yards. And they have a special guy to thank for that. A big portion of that, Mozzie Smith, the 2023 first round pick. And here's what he had to say post game. Play as a defensive unit, cohesive defensive unit. And, uh, and we got out there and we did that. Um. Yeah, man. You know, it's part of the game. You know, some. You know, see what's going on. You know, you deal with stuff. 
Um, but it's part of the game. And we got to keep going. Can you speak to the fact that you guys were able to run down tonight? Everybody was doing their job. Everybody did what they supposed to do. You know, and um, that's that's really how you stop it. It ain't no bells and whistles to stop a run game. Everybody do their job and do what they supposed to do. That's how you stop it. Uh, I feel like I grew. You feel better, you know. Uh, I want to keep growing and uh, don't want it to be a flash in the pan. So. What does this win do for you guys after the noise from the last two weeks? Uh, you block out the noise. People be talking and chirping it. Uh, nobody worried about that. And if they worried about it, you know, they worried about the wrong thing. So ain't nobody getting out there playing the run for us, with us. We don't care what they got to say. Mozzie Smith, so cool, calm, and collected after arguably one of his best performances this season in 2024. But you see what happens when you have good DT play, and it frees up a lot of guys. But specifically, let's talk about Mozzie Smith first. Yeah. What did you like out of Mozzie Thursday night? Well, I like that he didn't get pushed backwards. I mean, there were too many times in the first three games of the season where you saw him getting turned at the line of scrimmage, where you saw him five yards into the backfield, or really the, the front field at that point along the way. It wasn't one of his best games uh, in in the week prior, I mean, in the three games prior out of 124 defensive tackles in the NFL, he was rated number 123 by pro football focus. He was not off to a great start, but the way that he held the line of scrimmage allowed for those guys, the linebackers, Eric Hendricks, DeMarvian Overshone, to have some success, and it really showed allowing just those 26 yards on the ground. Something that Isaiah Stanback actually said in the pregame show was that once your front four performs so well, it allows your linebackers to be superstars. And hey, the defensive tackles, the whole defensive line honestly played very well um, on Thursday night against the Giants and it allowed Mar guys like DeMarvey and Overshone yeah. to play so freely. He was running from sideline to sideline. <laughs> but what did you like out of DeMarvey and Overshone? Because this is, again, something that, you know, we haven't really seen the linebackers play so freely. Yeah, well, I think it helps having the DT play up in front. But the, the one knock against DeMarvey and Overshone early was the fact that he was really washed out from the play by tight ends, by smaller players. Uh, even some of those guys that, like, we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, those, those tight ends, once they got to the second, level he was having trouble covering those guys and he's a guy who transferred from the the safety position to the linebacker spot you're supposed to be able to cover at least bottom line at some point along the way but he showed his ability to cover on Thursday he showed his ability to make tackles and to fly freely to the football and to make decisions hit the angle and play downhill I really loved what I saw from DeMarvey and Overshone and I think if he's going to be a part of Mike Zimmer's base packages on defense. That's going to be a huge plus for this defense moving forward. The Marvin Overshown with six tackles on Thursday night. And remember, this is just his fourth game, too. I, I mean, mean, there's still a long way to go. He's still building man. in terms of his NFL career, too. And a couple of third down stops as well, specifically one in the first quarter uh, with actually held the Giants to the field goal to that, uh, that drive. But when you talk about now moving to the corners, no Kalen Carson. Yeah. You had Andrew Booth that had to step up, and he tripped up on a couple of plays, but also Amani Aruwarie. I'm getting that name corrected <laughs> because he was called up on the practice squad literally on Thursday. But is there any concern with this cornerback room at all? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that's part of it. I mean, the injuries are starting to pile up because not only was Kalen Carson and Deron Bland unavailable for your team, you saw at one point Trayvon Diggs leave the game. It looked like he was dehydrated. They went and gave him an IV in the locker room. He was able to return turn which is great but that's something that it shows just how fragile this defensive back room is one injury one guy leaving after this would could certainly spell doom for the defensive backs. Andrew Booth, it took a little bit of time. I thought he played well by the end of the day. Malik Neighbors did everything he could and more for that, that Giants team, and there were a lot of missed throws from Daniel Jones. I think that helped out and maybe hid some of the problems from the secondary. Going into week five, I don't know if there's going to be that many misses from the opposing offense. you got to figure it out. Injuries are not in the secondary, and it's got to start going into this mini-buy. Mm, they're certainly going to need guys like Kalen Carson against the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. on Sunday August. October 6th, but now the Cowboys are two and two better than being one and three because if not, <laughs> it'd be the first time they've lost three September games since 2001 and they would be last in the NFC. East. We do not want that at all, but we're up next here on Cowboys Rewind. We're talking about that matchup Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cowboys in week five. <laughs> Cowboys Rewind was brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys.
and by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. The Dallas Cowboys continue to own the New York Giants, now 13-0 since 2017. That's under Dak Prescott, of course. But now they shift gears, and they're getting ready to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are now taking on the Indianapolis Colts in Week 4. They're undefeated. I don't know. Can the Cowboys end that confidence that they have heading in, playing under Justin Fields at quarterback? The Cowboys looking to go above 500. We'll see how they can do it up next.